Hello, welcome. We are live. I'm going to just wait a few minutes here while everyone logs on. Um, we're just going to give it until maybe maybe five after, do you folks think, would be a good time to start? Sounds good. Yeah, we got people logging on, but I want to give everyone a fair time to get situated. Thanks, everyone, for joining us tonight. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it'll be a good one. Got some cooler fall weather rolling in, so I don't mind the chance to kind of hunker down with a sweater in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> Are there hoodies and tubes yes, yeah. and shawls and blankets. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's like 80% of my wardrobe just opened up again with the cooler weather, so mm. I am in. I'm all about that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> How about you? Is it, uh, you're in, so where is everyone tonight? I'm, well, so I'm, in, I'm, I'm in Calgary. Yeah. Is the weather cool there as well? Yeah. It's been, uh, definitely getting a little bit chillier. Definitely, mm. uh, it's starting to feel that fall in the air, which is nice. So mm. it's good. Certainly making for some really great photos to go out and take, uh, with the, the changing the colors. Colors. The, the colors have been just gorgeous this year. Yeah. Nadia, where are you right now? I uh, I'm in I'm in Thunder Bay right now. Right, right. Mm -hmm. What yeah. are the colors doing out there? Oh, oh goodness! I've been in my uh, Airbnb <laughs> just chilling out. Um, I also um, installed uh, the Red Chair Sessions at the Thunder Bay Art Gallery, uh, which we'll get into. Uh, nice. Yeah, it's really nice here. Um, the leaves haven't totally fallen down yet. This, <laughs> this is ultimately like my favorite time of year, no doubt. And yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely a great time for photography. That's for sure. Heck yeah. Yeah, everybody's feeling very inspired, and you know, obviously, as we get closer to the colder temps, you know, people start hanging out inside, getting on their computers a little bit more. That usually gives a lot of time for kind of introspection and inspiration yeah. at the same time. It's, it's so the time to create right now when you don't yes, want to go outside <laughs> speaking of which i think we should probably get going i think we've uh... yeah i think so we've got uh people signing on we've got uh ryan saying hi from skoden and halifax and bowden we got people from all over so uh Excellent. i think yeah let's kick it off uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome to tonight's event, Reflecting Indigenous Realities with Nadia Kwandabens. Uh, I'm Jaleen. I'm here with McDane here in Edmonton. I'm joined tonight, obviously, by Nadia, who we will get to in a moment. Uh, but I'm also joined by Canon Canada's Russell Brown. Uh, he's actually going to say a few short words here before we really kick things off. So, Russell. Yeah, yeah, just welcome uh, everybody. Uh, we want to thank everyone for for spending your evening with us. Uh, Nadia, we want to thank you for spending your time as well. Um, you know, uh, obviously, I, as I mentioned, kind of as we we're starting here tonight, you know, this is a great time for everybody to kind of, you know, hunker down as we get into the colder temperatures and, you know, feel inspired. And we want to, you know, by by sponsoring these types of events, that's what we want a lot of people to take from these, uh, these, these talks is, you know, to feel inspired and and, and obviously to, um, you know, take that creative energy and, and, and put that forth into whatever you happen to be shooting yourself. We know that we get a lot of different people on these types of live streams. So, you know, we're just happy that no matter where you are, whether you're uh, on in Canada or elsewhere or um, a beginner or a seasoned professional, we hope you take something from tonight's talk. And, you know, certainly this is going to be a, a, a good one as well. So, um, I do want to mention to everybody as well that um, on behalf of Canon Canada and uh, McBain Camera, um, you guys should be getting an email from McBain uh, either this evening or early tomorrow uh, that will have an exclusive offer. Um, if you are so inclined and feel inspired, by all means, uh, feel free to take advantage of that. Uh, that is exclusive to you for signing up uh, tonight and, and should be coming to the email address that you signed up for the event for or with. Um, so make sure that you check your email and if you don't get that email, make sure you check your spam folder as well. Um, but other than that, from Canon Canada's perspective and my own personal, uh, uh, perspective, I'm very excited for tonight's presentation. I'm going to hand it back to Jolene and she's going to introduce our, our key, key feature tonight. 
Awesome. Thanks, Russell. Uh, I, yeah, so I too need to go through a little bit of housekeeping before we get going. I also got uh, informed here uh, when I said that first introduction, the Skoden, it's, <laughs> somebody informed me. Uh, that's just short for let's go then. No. Um, so I, uh, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a, a very white fool. <laughs> As I am. Uh, thanks, Russell. So yeah, I am. Um, I'm gonna go through a little bit of housekeeping before I hand things over to Nadia. Um, please feel free to post all of your questions in the comments section uh, on whatever platform you may be streaming on tonight. Uh, if it is a question that I can answer in the midst of the presentation, I'll do my best. Um, however, if it's a question for Nadia, which is more likely, uh, we'll save them up uh, kind of to the end and we'll uh, address them all together at the end of the presentation, just to kind of keep things moving and on track during the presentation. Uh, if you, like me though, only think of things to ask after the presentation, uh, please feel free to email me at workshop at and I'll act as kind of like a middleman to get the questions to their people. Um, and I, while I will throw that email address in the chat, so that everyone can access it. You can also find us on all social media platforms uh, as at McBain Camera, um, also our website, mcbaincamera.com. Uh, without any further delay, I do want to get on to tonight's presenter. Uh, I'm looking forward to kicking it off. I've been excited about tonight's presenter for a while now. Uh, we have the founder of Redworks Photography, uh, which is a dynamic photography company that focuses on empowering and emboldening indigenous lifestyles and cultures uh, through photo essays, features, and portraits. Redworks specializes in natural light portraiture, headshot sessions as well as event and concert photography nadia not just through her works with uh her work with red works uh brings an indigenous voice to portrait photography and i cannot wait to hear from her tonight uh everyone without further ado nadia kwandabins oh nadia, nadia you're muted actually <laughs> Give us that volume. Hello, hello, hello. hello. <laughs> it's nice to, um, uh, thank you so much for the beautiful introduction. Um, I've been really looking forward to this as well. And I love the red theme that we got going on here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, I'm really looking forward to tonight's presentation. Um, I will be giving an overview of um, what I do and and the whole involvement and ethos and uh, journey that I've um, been on actually uh, with Redworks for quite a while. So um, I'll just get right into it. Um, I'll do present. We're going to do the, the share screen game here. Mm -hmm. There we go. So I'm just going to... Um, give uh, an overview of I, yeah, my journey um, as a photographer, as an artist, as an Anishinaabekwe, as a two-spirit, as, you know, there's so many um, different stories that, that can be told and I really want to, um, I always take the time to um, prepare and mention and prepare for that because these are so many spaces that I think um, and sp spaces and stories that haven't been really um, touched upon or told, or, you know, given, given, given that, that space. So I really want to just focus on that. So I'm going to go straight from here into um, the slideshow and I'll give an overview of um, really how, <laughs> I don't even know how it began, really. Um, 
how I how I started as a, as a photographer. I'll just start from there, from the beginning, or a beginning. That sounds great, Nadia. I'm gonna remove me and Russell from the screen so people can focus on what they're here for. Okay, great. So here we go. You all can hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? We can yeah. hear you just fine. Uh, the Great. video's just being a little bit choppy. I don't know if... Uh... Are you all set, Nadia? Yeah. Okay, perfect. All good. So my name is Nadia Kwandabend. I'm a artist. I've always been an artist. When I think about it, I've been an artist since day one. <laughs> um, I've always really looked at the world in a different way. And for me, it's, um, it's really heartfelt, it's genuine, because I know I'm a part of a community. I'm a part of a community who's voices and history hasn't hasn't authentically been portrayed in the best of light I started out um I graduated high school uh, a little bit early. Um, and then I went into, um, I traveled to Confeder Confederation College here in Thunder Bay. Um, I'm here in Thunder Bay actually, I'm installing a show. Um, I'll get to that um, at a later part in this presentation, but I wanted to talk about like, how I got started because you know when you're growing up on the res you're growing up you know in foster care all these different places you don't know whether or not you know that you're good enough and then I started to question myself am I am, am I am I an artist so I really um started thinking about that and and I, I, I said to myself, yes, I'm an artist. <laughs> I wanted to be so many types of artists. And I ended up being a, a photographer because I'm very observant. Um, I like really watching people and being in different spaces and listening um, to people is very important for me as an artist. Or not just as an artist, just as a human being, right? So that for me was always, um, I guess, foremost in my mind. Because initially, I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to be a writer. I went to university. Um, I studied to be a writer. Uh, I wanted to be an English professor. Uh, professor of stories of, you know, different, you know, worlds that we could, um, you know, put ourselves into, place ourselves into, or be about, or there's so many different stories um, that I hold as a photographer. So I'm always really mindful of that. 
and I think I was right right from the start because I always go back to different um, conversations that I had with um, you know different family members who I um, some of you know family who I grew up with. I always you know held that because that was really important for me because if you're displaced from a community and for me at such a young age, I wanted to be connected to you know something. You know, Canada has displaced um, Indigenous children for how long? So when I when I thought about that, and when I placed that concept in my work, it was it just became that much more that much more meaningful, heartfelt, powerful, heartbreaking and empowering at the same time. So there's so many um, different emotions that I go through. Um, when I think about uh, my work, when I think about all the different people that I've met. So I started out, yeah, going through, uh, I worked at CBC for a time. Um, after college and university. Um, and then part of me was just like, okay, what, what are you doing? What are you doing, Nadia? What's going on? I don't even know, right? So I always let the flow of life and art and where it takes you. I always, I've never been afraid to just go there, to just do it. So I let my instinct take me to um, Arizona. So I lived in Arizona for, oh geez, good, almost two years, I think, almost two years. And you can't take a bad picture in Arizona. And from there, I met, oh my God, I met so many, like, I really feel like the time that I spent there was, it was so beautiful, beautiful because everyone was, you know, there's like a, a place and time or space and time for everything. And the timing and all of the friends that I met there, oh my God, it was just so, I can't, I can't describe it other, other than to say that it was the, I was in the right place at the right time. And in hindsight, I think about all of the photos and moments and people that I've been with since to to be with all of these these beautiful communities it, it really was like i was in the right place at the right time so from there from Arizona, um, my partner at the time was also a photographer. He was a really, really good photographer. We really um, spent time thinking about, you know, you know, what does it mean? What does it all mean? What are we doing? You know, what does it all mean? It has to mean, it has to mean more than, you know, uh, the communities that we grew up in. Or, you know, the, the trauma or whatever that we grew up in. It has to be, it, we have to, you know, push forward and put forth so much more beauty than, than what, you know, our experiences had been. So that's when I started doing portrait work. And he, he pushed me, my partner pushed me towards doing portrait work. And I really found that um, 
it it was a it was a beautiful like nudge like hey you know you got this like you're it was an acknowledgement for me like you're you're a beautiful human being you have ways to connect with so many people you can do it right so um that's where portrait work started for me and from there i went to uh it really just um just really grew from there um quite beautifully uh the networks you know all of this and i and i i go back to um drawing on drawing upon that concept that there's a right place and time and space for for everything to happen and i really think i really think about that a lot because um it's evident i think in in the trajectory trajectory of what i what i've done and but not just there but there's so much more to it so um so i really think a lot about that um and I really thank my partner at the time for pushing me because I was really shy. I was, oh my God, I was so shy. I didn't know, um, I really struggled with that. But at the same time, oh my God, I used to be involved in improv theater um, classes and that really drew me out. So, and I actually really draw upon um, my improv theater that those classes and that training, I carry that into my own um, practice as well, because it's so organic, it's so natural, it's so, I never want to bring, uh, I never want to introduce an element that is that I can't force anything to happen. So you got to go with what what's in front of you who's in front of you, where you happen to be, what's going on, right? So it's this constant um, like flux of different, like so many beautiful elements going on. And what does it say? What does it all say? Um, as much as I am a so shy and a photographer, and you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, I always bring bring all of that and I make sure that everyone I photograph is comfortable and everyone is there, they feel safe. They're safe with me. That's the main thing that I bring. Um, I think, uh, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure. So I'm always really grateful and um, I always feel really like thankful for that. And, you know, those lessons that, that have that come along the way. So after I moved from Arizona, I had this major um, invitation to a group exhibition of all these artists. We had like started forming all these like artist circles and like everyone knew it's like, oh my God, you're doing this, you're doing this. And I'm like, oh my God. So I was um, one of the photographers and it was so exciting to be a part and to be in that time. And I think about, I think a lot about like, artists, indigenous artists, like in the past who have also been doing the same. And to be a part of that continuum, I think is really important uh, for me to be a part of you know, that space and continuum and flux is really important for me. So I think a lot about that. Um, and to me, it's really beautiful. Uh, so that, um, exhibition that I was a part of that I got invited to. I was so excited and I was really nervous at the same time. I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, I was questioning, am I an artist? I don't know what's going on, right? So you, you really think about it and expand and really hone in on some of your core beliefs as a human being, um, as an artist, right? So 
I really um, thought a lot about that. And I said to myself, oh my God, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do it, just do it. Uh, so I did. <laughs> so I went for it and uh, I've been a photographer now um, overall uh, 22 years. And professionally, I think about, say, uh, oh, I can't do math right now. <laughs> I can't do math right now, but I think it's, I started in 2016 professionally, or 2006, 2006 professionally. Um, that was, I remember that summer because that was the first time I was just like, yeah, we're going to do portraits now. So it was July of 2006. I don't know, someone will do math. <laughs> um, but ever since then, it's just taken me on to this like really beautiful, um, really beautiful journey. There's so many moments that I spend with people. And I think um, my practice built upon just, just visiting, the act of visiting, I think is important because, you know, nowadays we all have our phones, we all have that, you know, socials, everything. But for me, um, like I mentioned before, I'm a really quiet, um, observant person and I, I'm a really good listener I think you know to be able to you know take in all of those stories and those visuals I think is really important and to you know give um, to honor that space you know that you have to visit with with someone is, is I think really important because at the end like what do we have what, what do we have at the end? So I'm always really mindful of that. And I really love all of the, the journeys that um, Redworks and my photography company that where it's taken me, where it's taken me. It's soon after I started um, doing portrait work that I, um, I returned to Canada. I was living in Arizona, as mentioned. Um, so I returned to Canada and really after that, just everything just went like really, um, it just got really busy. And I was touring about good, at first it was, eight months out of the year, six months, eight. And then it got to be about 10, 10 months um, out of the year. Uh, so that to me really spoke uh, about how much there is a need for indigenous um, photography and you know that representation is so important. Um, it's so important because you know, historically, when you think about it, um, we're not accurately represented in, you know, the indigenous, the, you know, that, or in history. So that for me started the whole, um, well, I'm gonna keep going. You know, how many, there's so many communities and families and, um, you know, to be a part of uh, circles of kinship, I think is really um, poignant and empowering for me. And not just me, because once you take a picture and you put it out, it becomes a part of this whole uh, narrative. And for me, that's what, that's what's important to me is to, to, to 
ensure and to hold that space for our community and our aunties, uncles, cousins, sisters, our all our family, our, our kin is so important to me. And so after, I think it was a good, oh geez, maybe like, I think it was 2000, 2008 um, that I started thinking about doing specific um, series and to think about, to think about photography in a way that that draws a di direct connection to you know who you are it, it, right down to it who you are and to be a part of um that whole process for me and others involved in the different series that you'll see um, in the rest of the presentation is really important to me. Um, I always make sure that everyone is safe and they're honored. Absolutely. They have that, you know, we get to have that. There's different exhibitions coming up that these photos, most of the, or some of what you see will, will be a part of these exhibitions. And I'm sitting on 20, yeah, yeah, 20 years of photography here. And I want to ensure that it's all um, properly taken care of and archived and categorized and keyworded, all of that. So, and I also want to mention as well, I mean, like I've always, for me as a photographer, I always say that for me, uh, I've always shot on, I actually started out on uh, I started out shooting black and white, black and white film. And I loved it. And I still love black and white because I love all the nuances and tonality and all of the shades and highlights, lows, mids, everything. I love everything about black and white. I started out on a black and white uh camera film. I can't remember which, um, which camera it was. But I mentioned previously, um, having moved to Arizona, and, and the first camera that I was able to save up uh, and buy was a Canon. And it was this consumer grade, I think it was the A something, A power shot. <laughs> uh, camera and I loved it. Oh my God, I, I absolutely loved it. And I remember there was a setting on it cause you could do like different, you know, program modes, settings on, on the camera. And I was just like, oh my God, there's a way you can get in like crazy ass or crazy close up into like, like a, a moment. So I remember like doing um, a lot of photography about that and uh, the macro or yeah, that's what it was, the macro settings. And I remember thinking, oh my God, this is a whole other like world. And then it just completely expanded from there to moments like this, where it's just like this in, in insane crowd, right? 
So the, those minute, like very close up detailed moments can expand out where you, you see, you know, marches and rallies like this. Um, so I've always shot on Canon. I have a pretty good range of lenses that can cover um, pretty much um, like a good range of situations and environments. And I'm a natural light uh, shooter. I'm a natural light shooter. I don't like using flash or any type of um, light that isn't apparent. <laughs> Keep it as natural and simple as possible. And then part of me actually was like, there was um, there was a time where I thought, oh, I have to know all of this gear and all of this and all, you know, but once you like put on the lens and you know the, the technicalities of it, you know its capabilities, you can use that and push it and really work this a lens to capture a moment like this. This was, I'm pretty sure that was shot on the 50. Um, I have a pretty good uh, wide range of lenses. I remember um, one of, uh, I think one of my like film school um, students or film school days when I was film student. <laughs> when I, I think I got nicknamed the human tripod and <laughs> and they were like, and then now when people ask, go oh, what's your gear? I'm like, uh, this, this and this, right? And they're like, what? You don't even, you know, a tripod or a reflector? I'm like, mm. <laughs> Um, I got nicknamed the, yeah, human tripod. Pretty steady. So I really enjoy, um, you know, going back uh, to moments like this because really for me, like as a portrait photographer and I do a lot of events as well, um, I love concert photography. You'll see uh, at the end of this slideshow. Uh, for me, it's always been about just being there, being present um, and letting the moment and like, there's so many moments as a photographer that I've missed. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I wish I, I would have gotten that. And I was uh, maybe a little slow to change my gear, but uh or maybe it was just as as it was meant to be. The phil like philosopher in me um, says that, of course. But it really is, um, you know, all these different moments and time spent with the community. I think is really uh, poignant and empowering, and it makes me feel. Because uh, I didn't grow up in uh, in the community at all. I grew up in foster, foster care in different homes all over. Uh, so being a part and being a part of it again, because it was always there, always there. To To be a part of it is something really beautiful for me. And to, as a photographer, it's interesting to, you know, document these, document these moments. Not, not just for myself, but I do it for, you know, that ultimate narrative to, I do it. I do it because I, I want to belong and I, I know I belong, 
and I know where I come from. I know who my peeps are. I do it because there are so many images about indigenous people that I don't think, well, the way I see the world and life, I don't think they're, it's accurate. So, you know, there's so many ways that indigenous, we as indigenous people survive and struggle and, and 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 show how how much you know beauty there is there so uh, that's why i do it and to be a part of that community or my own community and to be a part of that is is so it's it's such a beautiful artistic practice what I'm doing. I think about it day to day, every day, every you know to be a part of that community, to be welcomed and introduced, to be, you know, have this whole flux of conversation going on. We're talking about indigenous uh, futurisms. We're talking about indigenous history. We're talking about disruption, um, occupation. So for me, that's that's why I, why I do it, um, the work that I do, and this is how I see the world. This is how I see our people, and I love I love that I get to be a photographer. I have to pinch myself. There's so many moments in here. I don't know if there's any Q and A, but there's so many moments in here I could speak to. I know every moment uh, <laughs> in these photos and um, where they were photographed, all of these, and sometimes even specific um, lens choices. So um, it's really it's really beautiful when I. Um, when I'm like 80 years old <laughs> or like older, I don't know, uh, I will, I will be looking back on these photos and just think about thinking about all of these moments that I've had, that I've shared or that have been given to me. Um, and to reflect that back to um, to the world, I think is 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 a beautiful thing. So so yeah. Um, if at the end, if anyone has any questions about any of these um, photos, if anything. Um, has resonated with you. Uh, you can you can put it in the question um, box. So Redworks uh, was established in two thousand eighteen and we're now in 2022. And it's been pretty, yeah, really, really beautiful since. So now 
uh, I'm gonna go into um, start into the different series. I'm just gonna into the different um, series that that I. When was this, when was the first series? I think it was two thousand five, two thousand seven, two thousand seven. So we'll go from here into uh, the first series, which is uh, Concrete Indians. So I had been working uh, quite uh, somewhat steadily as an artist um, an Anishinaabe Quay artist, photographer for over a few years. Um, I was touring a lot and I'd be on the road for um, a long time. And then I started thinking about, well, what does, um, what does my, you know, art, what does, what can it give me? And what, because, like, I, I started thinking, okay, well, if I'm, like, if I'm just, you know, going out doing, doing the, you know what I mean? As beautiful as it is, as much as I love being out in the community, I started thinking, well, as an artist, I want to say something. What is it going to be? What is it? And I started, and then I, sitting on a couch, and I, I think I was living in Toronto at the time, and I started thinking, oh, okay, if I'm, I don't I think I was just really tired at the time and I wanted my artwork to reinvigorate, re reinvigorate myself. And I thought, okay, well, I'm here out here living, you know, you know, out in these cities. I don't know what it means. I kind of feel really, I don't know how I feel. So I posed it as a question in a series format, open call format. All of my series are open call, um, meaning anyone or indigenous, like if you really, you know, it's resonated with you and your indigenous, you can tell me your story and if you want to be photographed for it. Yeah, that's what I mean. And I, I'm not sure how it started, like if I could pinpoint, you know, like an ex like the precise ex exact way that the series came together, um, I couldn't do that. But I will say, uh, I mentioned before, timing uh, is everything. Um, everything happens in its own time. Yeah, that's really true. Uh, this series came at, the idea for it came at a really um, interesting space. Uh, so as soon as I, I was sitting on my couch and I was just like, what does it all mean? I was just like typing and I was just like, going off in my head and I was thinking, oh my God, there has to be more, there's gotta be more. And I kept, I kept thinking about it and it, it like sort of came together in this way. And I was like, what if it's called this? Or I started thinking about conversations that I had with, I can't remember who it was, was it my Kokom? Or Kokom is, um, Grand, um, grandma in Anishinaabe, or I started thinking about like different like um, conversations that I had been um, a part of. And I re always remembered um, concrete Indians. And I was like, 
what? Concrete, what? What does that, what? <laughs> I started really thinking about it. And I was like, hey, there's so many different ways to think about it because it's like concrete because we're in like city, it's happening in the city, concrete Indians around the city, but concrete in a way that we know who we are and it's concrete is that there's no denying right who we are so concrete in that way so there's different ways that i think about my series um and how i name my series i always um really um hold on hold on to different ideas sometimes it can be an extended amount of time like years or sometimes it can come like just straight like this one was concrete indians came just straight i think it was within uh a week i had about so like so many emails back because i issued out oh my god what about this idea and i sent i sent the idea off to uh different friends that i had in the community at the time i'd been traveling for quite a while and and right away, people were like, oh my God, yeah, they wanted to be a part of it. And I was like, oh, okay. So I started thinking more about it. And I, that's when it, Concrete Indians solidified. I gave it um, that name. So, um, and I wanted to like sort of pay, or no, that's, that, that's a weird word. I wanted to I wanted to like honor um, generations before who had come to the city or were forced to the city uh, for different reasons, right? So whether it be education, health, um, you know, jobs. Mm -hmm. You got to feed your family, right? So I wanted the series to be about um, recognizing all of that and honoring all of that, you know, concrete Indians, you know, that whole name, I think really um, speaks to, you know, generations who have experienced uh, You know, where do we belong? And I ask myself now, right? That question just came. If I ask myself now, it's like, we've always been here. So it's interesting um, how when you revisit works, like how much more meaning you can can derive from that so i'm really um it the series just um went it, it really resonated with a lot so and i made them into um color versions initially they were black and white but i made them into color versions uh because i like um, changing changing it up and what does it mean when you introduce color from black and white so uh so from here uh there's so much more that i can say about the series um but we're gonna go into um the next uh series which is oh the outtakes yeah. So after, um, hold on, a moment here.
<clears throat> so after oh Jews. I think it was about a good 12, 12 years of touring. Um, I realized I was just like, oh my God, all these moments, <laughs> all of these beautiful people and families and communities. I was just like, oh my God, like I wanna spend like a good, a good month or so uh, just with the archives so I can like properly uh, categorize everything and be like this was photographed there and I was using this lens and, and this is who it is and you know what I mean? There's so many moments um, that I've that I've had with the community that are, and everyone is so generous and like they're like your uncles and aunties and cousins that you didn't know yet. <laughs> um, so everywhere I go, I have you know all these different moments moments with people, and I wanted to start this series because. Um, the indigenous community, so uh, we like to tease each other most, most of, most of, most of. And as a photographer, sometimes people feel like really awkward in front of the camera. And I'm like, I, I feel really awkward in front of the camera, but, um, and I always say that too. And, I'm photographing anyone. I'm like, yep, <laughs> I know. Uh, but I always wanted, um, I always make sure that people feel, you know, comfortable and safe and in front of the camera and they can let loose. Like I'm probably their you know, cousin or distant cousin. <laughs> I always get this every time someone always says, Nadia, you, you remind me of, uh, you remind me of my uh, my niece's like niece's daughter or my niece's you know, or you know there's always um, this sort of like element and I'm just like oh really I get that all the time like who's your who's your auntie then who's your you know I always ask who's your cousin who's your auntie you know probably know the <laughs> There's like one degree, um, there's always one degree of separation uh, in the indigenous community. We always know someone yeah, whose cousin is, yeah. <laughs> so that's why I wanted to start this series. And it's um, I'm like a, over 20 years, I sit on like all of these sessions and I, I always tease all these people and and I'm like, oh my God, like the, those, that was actually the best take when they're like laughing and their head thrown, head thrown back, all anti laugh. Um, and this one, oh my God, uh, Mar uh, yeah, Miranda and her son on the left here, like they're all full on laughing. Um, so yeah, there's always moments like that uh, that I love, and that's what that series is about. I really like that one. Makes me laugh every time, makes me smile. So after, uh, I think it was, yeah, 2019, 2000, yeah, 2019, um, I got approached, uh, this is going into a lot of the series work that I do and I get commissioned 
sometimes they get commissioned or sometimes it's my own idea. And this is um, both. I was commissioned, but it was also my idea. So I was approached by a production company in Winnipeg um, called Eagle Vision, and they want to do a series on MMIWG, uh, which is Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls uh, in Two-Spirit. Uh, community uh, are people who have been taken uh, for so long. And I had an idea, um, this was back in 2000, I wanna say 15, 2015. Um, I had an image of a red shawl in my head and a, a blank, a blank white sign. And I didn't know what the sign, I didn't know about the sign, what it was gonna say. And, and I, I wanted the red shawl to be um, significant because when you think about, about it, if you're wrapped in a red shawl, that, that feels so, you know, comforting, it's, it's, you're being taken care of. That's to me what it represented. And I was approached by this pro production company in Winnipeg. And um, I brought forth this idea. And they were like, Okay, we're going to run with it. Um, I that is, we're going to run with it. So I spent um, I think it was, I can't remember. Mm. I think it was three, two or three months with uh, this production company, Eagle Vision in Winnipeg and we went all over Canada. Um, they had been approach and it was an, in, an entire campaign um, by the federal government to talk about missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. And every person that we photographed and that we met and who I talked with, they Everyone was like, affected by it. And I remember being so nervous because I was like, oh, what if I can't, um, what if I can't, you know, do the portraits? What if I can't do that? What if I can't perform? What if I can't, what if something messes up? And I remember every morning we went out, I would just like, okay, put that aside you're meant to, you know, do, do this work. So that's, that's, that's what we did. And to be a part of and to stand in front of um, everyone in the series was, um, I remember being so, I was so tired and, but that doesn't even um, equate or even like what these what these family members have have to go through um, with their with their woman being daughters, aunties, moms, everyone you know, with them being missing. I had to really. Um, spend a, a lot of time and take um, take that that space with them and to be really um, gentle well I am I am a gentle person to be there and to hold that space for them was really um, 
meaningful and heartfelt um, for me and for them. Like, um, it, it must take so much strength and bravery, courage, honesty, truthfulness, justice to, to share your story like that. So I was always really mindful of that. And it had to be photographed uh, with the utmost um, reverence and truthfulness behind it. So we spent, um, I think it was two, two months. All across the country. I'm really, um, I'm really, I'm not, I'm not going to say glad that I was part of it. I mean, I am, but I'm not glad that there's even an issue of MMIWG2S. So I think it's really important that work as a photographer, as an artist, to be a part of, you know, you know a message like this it's important so um i'm just really glad that i was able to be a part of it and to spend time and to you know honor um their stories um and to to be there for them you know one-on-one -on -one. that's the whole thing about being a photographer too people don't know is you have to be one-on-one -on -one. it's not just hey point and shoot it's you have to and your lenses actually have to um you can you can distance yourself but you can also actually be there um so i always discern um my lens choices based on that whether or not i'm i'm close enough or just you know there you know you can't you can't take up um space um, as a photographer, but these stories um, have a lot of have a lot of meaning, and sometimes people give me space um, at different events and rallies. They give me space, and I'm I'm really um, thankful and feel really um, you know grateful for that. You know, recognizing that there's you know, art and <laughs> lenses there that can, you know, capture the moment and essence of what's going on. So, um, so I'm always, always really mindful of that. So this is the um, MMIW uh, rally or not rally, this was the actual presentation of the final report. Um, this was a while back. And I remember thinking, oh my goodness, there's a report being presented to Justin Trudeau. And this is the, you know, there, there were, how many years spent on this report and all the stories gathered and, you know, um, and of the recommendations given, um, I, it's interesting, you know, what, what of those recommendations are, uh, are, going to be fulfilled uh, so so i'm going to move here from the last uh to the last um slideshow and this is the last one
so these are um the red chair sessions I hope it's playing. Is it playing? So these are um, the red chair sessions. Sorry, Nadia. It doesn't uh, doesn't seem to be playing the the this video. I don't know if you need to hit the space bar or something. Oh no, it's gone. Okay, never mind. Ignore me. Okay, yeah, it's a bit of um, it's a little lengthy. I wanted to um, spend some time um, on this one because I feel like um, do you see the it's switched. Yeah. I just want to make sure it's playing that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Great. So this is the red chair sessions. Um, I, I, I'm not entirely sure how um, this series came together. Uh, I think it initially started with uh, an idea I had in my head. Uh, what if there's a red chair in the water? What if, what if, what if there's that? And what if I place myself in the red chair in the water? And where am I? Where am I actually? Like if I, if this was to be photographed, where is this red chair? And what is this water? That's what I started thinking about. And so that's initially the idea. And I, I actually didn't do anything, um, like actually photograph anything for it um, until much later. But that idea really stuck. Um, that idea just kept, it was just there. And much like um, the MMIW, um uh series it was just it just stayed in my head for for a bit and then and then i started whoa what if it's oh what does the red chair even mean and then i started thinking about it well what if it's you know our connection to land and water and then i started thinking oh well Who are we without the land and the water? And then I started thinking about my my own language. And then what is, oh, how can I even have my own language without the land and the water and where, you know, where I come from? And then, and then it, went, it just kept going off um, and stemming off from there. So, um, I'm, I really, I really love the series because uh, it, to me, speaks to ultimately those initial ideas and where we come from, who are we, where are we, who am I, you know, like it's, it's just really, um, I just really started thinking about all of it and and even started thinking about how even I grew up. I grew up in foster care. I didn't know about any of who I was until like much later in life. So to draw like a connection 
and to visually like place and to you know have that represented um through that red in these chairs to me just immediately i i felt grounded i felt placed i felt that this was my space um so that's where this whole uh this whole series that's the whole idea around it and it i didn't launch it until i think 2000 i can't remember when was canada 150 it was just before then that i was just like oh, i started thinking about it whenever canada 150 was because there were so many artists that um you know as artists indigenous artists um we, we weren't about Canada 150, I don't know, it was just me, but um, I wasn't about that at all. And I, I started thinking about this series again, and that's when I launched it. So it was around Canada 150. So the series is ultimately about that, but it's also um, recognizing, um, you know, as Indigenous people, or as an Indigenous, you know, Anishinaabe Kwe, myself, I am a guest here. This is not my traditional territory that, you know, where I, my peeps come from, right? So um, I wanted it to be, you know, the red chair for me represents that connection um, to the land, ultimately. But then it also means that, you know, there are so many indigenous um, peoples or nations um, across Canada and the US. I haven't even gone to the US um, with the series. I would love to see where that would go. But thinking about um, different nations here in Canada and what, what does Canada, mm -hmm, Canada would not be Canada if it wasn't for indigenous people um, here and indigenous land. So, and then that goes even deeper into um, more political topics that I won't discuss here, but um, it's really interesting the series and it's in its whole entirety when you look at the whole series itself it's um it's really beautiful it's empowering um to me and every time i look at it i'm just like wow to think about to think about where all of these people came from and all of the land that there's that they're sitting on or standing on like with a chair right um it's really interesting to me So I'm here in Thunder Bay uh, right now. Uh, we just finished installing the red chair sessions here at the gallery, the Thunder Bay Art Gallery um, last week. Um, and it's uh, showing there till the end of the year. So uh, if anyone wants to check it out. What's really cool though is um, I always really, I always actually really laugh at this is because there's like different chairs and all of these porches. <laughs> and it's, it actually really came together like that. Like there's um, no one, like we don't know where the red chairs come from. They just like <laughs> sort of come together. And it's like, hey, I have a red chair <laughs> yeah, that you can borrow. Or sometimes people, um, I do a little, uh, for the Thunder Bay um, Art Gallery, a dear friend came, uh, or I posted it on Facebook, I need a red blanket, I, I need a red blanket. And then they came, they came through with a red blanket um, uh, 
uh, for the exhibit. So that'll be there um, during the show, like the entirety of the show. Um, so I'm really thankful for everyone that comes together, <laughs> pulls through with all these red chairs and um, blankets and everything. So um, I'm really happy and grateful for that. So I think this is um, pretty much wrapping up um, my um, the, the talk. So <laughs> if anyone has any questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nadia. That was fantastic. Very inspiring. Um, yeah, it's, truly. It, it's pretty incredible. I mean, um, you know, uh, obviously uh, we did get a lot of engagement in the chat and I do want to get to some of those questions that we have there as well. Um, but just in general, I mean, I think it's, it's pretty impressive. Um, when looking at your, your slideshows here, you know, you really are utilizing a camera as a tool to kind of frame and, and tell those stories and the range of emotions that you kind of covered is pretty pretty impressive everything from joy to pain and and it, everything in between so it's it's very inspiring yeah the uh the range of scope of what you capture for using very minimal lighting and uh modifiers and all of that like your images don't they don't all look the same they have a similar voice but they're not all you know they're they're portraying like a beautiful array of people's lives and emotions and um and even just some of the first comments that we were getting, uh, we had uh, Rick chime in right at the beginning. You are an artist. Just when you were talking, am I an artist? Am I even an artist? What qualifies? And uh, that is obvious in your portfolio and photos. Your capture of people, places, and use of color is excellent. And I, I have to agree. Um, just incredible array of color, a great scope. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Russ, did you have any questions that were coming up immediately, or do you want me to just start rolling well, through what we have in the comments here? I, we, do I think have we, should, we should go through the comments because there was a lot of really good ones. But I mean, just kind of to that last <laughs> comment that you brought up there, and and also just from a technical standpoint, I was curious as well. Like, um, you know, obviously you started off the presentation by saying you use a lot of natural light. I think that was obvious in a lot of those photos there. It was in natural, beautiful settings outdoors. And, um, you know, and, and you had mentioned that you also have a wide variety of lenses, but as we were going through the presentation, I noticed there was a, there was a wide variety of, of lenses that you employ, whether it be, uh, you made that comment about distance, you know, whether yeah. you need to be close or whether you want to be far. And, you know, there was that one photo of that, that baby swaddled on the red blanket with the hand on it. And I thought that was a really, really nice That's, photo. That, that was a fairly mm -hmm. wide angle. And then- I I think for me, that's really important because um, you don't want to get like, I don't know, like too close. Mm -hmm. And the lens like allows you to get just enough. Mm -hmm. And then you don't want to get too much because then that like gets into a space where you're, you're, you're taking up too much, right? Yeah. Um, a photographer, a photographer has to be, you know, kind of, kind of like, like a little, you know, on there, that. but not there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, you're kind of covering both. I mean, I noticed like when you were using a lot of your like straight portrait work, you're using, I mean, not long lenses, but, you know, kind of in that 75 to maybe a hundred plus range. Um, and then whereas like some of the street photography that you were shooting at, at different rallies and stuff was kind of a mixture of longer lenses and wide, wide lenses. Do you, do you tend to, depending on what you're shooting, do you tend to gravitate towards specific lenses that you use? Like, is there any go-to ones that you, you tend to employ? When shooting what? Well, the different types of photography. So, so portrait work, it seemed like you were using longer lenses, but then when you were shooting, um, street photography it was a little bit wider do you tend to kind of match what lenses you're using uh, for what subject you're shooting and 
If so, which ones do you like to concentrate on? Yeah, so for more portrait work, I do the 50. Um, and I shoot all L series. Um, so I'm on the 50 L um, F 1.2. I use that. I've used that for so long, and I recently acquired um, the eighty-five um, F uh, one point four L series. So mm -hmm. I've been using that for more um, even headshots. Um, that that lets me get like a little closer, and I love that. Um, eighty-five is but, my favorite focal length for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is the like dream, dream lens. And <laughs> I'm so glad I have it now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really interesting because like uh, whenever I do a lot of like trade shows and stuff, I talk to different portrait photographers and every photographer seems to have their own set opinion as to what they feel the ideal focal length is. Uh, I, I would definitely say a lot tend to stick around that 85 some like to go up to yeah. 135. But even yeah, the 50 mil, as you were mentioning before, seems to be quite popular. The 50 mil, the 50 mil lets you get a little bit closer. But like if people don't like want that, you know, that space, I know like you know how many feet that is with like a good, you know, shot. Um, sometimes you can step back and even further back and shoot with an 85. Yeah, mm -hmm. wide, wide open or a, it's such a great lens. I love it. I've been just almost like shooting just like on it all the time now. <laughs> so, so Jolene, we, we should get to some of the photos that, or some of the questions. That yeah, we're I was just going to say, so we do have some oh, good, I mean, we do have some great comments. Like there were lots of comments, uh, like just commenting the photo of an elder and the child, um, just like a lot of people very grateful for what you're what you're capturing and what you're documenting it's so incredibly valuable um you know comments cookums in a jingle dress what <laughs> um but i yeah they're uh, interesting using natural light uh, i'm betting that allows you more time to focus on subject more so great depth of field yeah do you find like just using the natural light kind of cuts out some of the distractions of you know setting up a studio or a backdrop or you know a whole lighting rig um you find it just gives you more time to shoot it really does i mean like um i'm very improvisational based in what i do um it's like get there sh get on the ground figure out what's going on um get um the most part of it for me is um i don't know if we were to break it down into percentage percentages um I would say about 75% is just, just you and with the people. And then if you break that down even more, it can be into gear, right? It can be into your lenses, your choices, the environment, everything you choose, right? Just the environment, all of that improv stuff. And then the rest of it is um, editing and um, all of that, so. Do you yeah. tend to go somewhat light on your editing process? Cause you made a comment oh. also about trying to make it look as natural as possible. Oh, every, every photo that you see is how I saw it. Hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't do anything else. Um, sometimes I'll do like a, if it's, you know, for like commercial or like paid red work stuff, I'll do some retouching, whatever. But everything you see is like, it's, it's light. Mm -hmm. It's in, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the light. Uh, we had a comment or a question here. Um, do you feel you're in between the two worlds? If you had a white foster family, uh, like disconnected from the culture and trying to reconnect, we had a few people who were commenting uh, part of the '60s scoop and how do you reconnect with your uh, kind of your your background, your history, and all of that. That's really um, that's really interesting. Um, and for me, um, as an artist, I've just been like. You, you have to, I, I really came into my own. 
and I recognize that in in my in myself. Um, and I recognize that that's um, a lot of so many um, stories, you know, not just within the indigenous community, but to understand yourself and to really, you know, like <laughs> it goes, it goes back to the whole, you know, concept is like, um, am I an artist? Right? Am I an artist? Am I an artist? Do I belong? Where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I felt uh, that I did, and I have um, lived a large part of my life, um, you know, seeking that and living it. So that's what I've done. Mm. And I, I think a lot of people, you know, should seek you know, what drives them and what makes them feel good and what what they think um, would be good for the community as a whole and, you know, humanity. Yeah, and what, what empowers them and, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a comment here. There's a photo that you showed a few minutes ago. This was, I mean, obviously in the middle of the presentation. A uh, blonde woman in the winter. Uh, there's a lonely tree behind her on the left, and it looks like a huge lake behind her. Do you recall where that was taken? Because you were saying that you remember most of the yeah. details. Do you know where that one was taken? Yeah, that was taken at the far end of the beaches. In Toronto? But in Toronto. The okay. far end, I believe it was early winter like March or something. Yeah. And her name is um, Mariah. Uh, oh, she's a writer. Mariah. She's me too. She's a writer. Yeah. I'd say, I'd argue that you kind of proved your point anyway, just by remembering <laughs> her first name. So well done. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I mean, lots of people just saying, we had a few comments saying you should make a book of all the series that you that you were showing tonight um we also had a comment here uh while your journey has been largely reflecting on the indigenous the resulting photos must reflect well with your own indigenous culture culture but the resulting images have crossed over to the photography world of cultures all over uh which i yeah i mean more, more of a, a comment i guess but i yeah it's very like it's poignant across several cultures, uh, it feels anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, lots of engagement here. People <laughs> just run the run the slideshow again, and we want to see more of your photos. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, there was one comment or one question: Did you add the text to the white signs after the fact, or were they actually on those white signs? I genuinely couldn't figure it out. <laughs> Add what? What did I do? Uh, so those those white signs that the people were holding up in those portraits that you had, did, were those oh. actually on the white boards? Oh, okay. So yeah, that was the series that I mentioned with um, the production company in Winnipeg. Yeah. Yeah. So Eagle Vision, they had their own crew. So I photographed the actual portraits and it was just like a blank and then they added oh. um, the hashtags and everything after that. Okay, that mm. makes sense. I, was like, yeah. I know, it was so like, just like perfect. And yeah. Clear, <laughs> clear. <laughs> no, no glare or anything. Yeah, I was very <laughs> impressed with the lighting on it. <laughs> uh, a lot of people, I, I, myself included, just kind of in awe that you had photographed Buffy St. Marie as many times as you have. Big fan. <laughs> I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry right now. Oh, no. I didn't mean to make you cry. <laughs> I won't ever bring her up again. <laughs> no, no. I love Buffy. She is a dear friend. Serious? Well, now you're she a hero, is. too. So, <laughs> yeah, just one of the most iconic people in the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's also, somebody uh, was fact-checking for the uh, 150th uh I think it was 2017. Yeah, I knew it. I said <laughs> in my head it was 2017. I remember. I remember that. Yeah. Um, do you have a, a 
somebody just asked, what is your most memorable photo ever? Do you have one that you kind of harken back to as a favorite? My most memorable photo, oh my goodness. We can let you think. I, uh, I think it's something that um, no one has, that we haven't seen yet. <laughs> I've seen <laughs> it. I've seen it. I haven't released it yet. <laughs> oh, oh, it's a secret. I like that. That's we a call great that one answer. A teaser. Yeah. Well done, Nadia. Um, it's actually true. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, <laughs> that's awesome. And it was shown on a cannon. Well, we are. It was shot uh, on a camera. Good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are just after eight thirty, so I think we might uh, close it down here. Um, I mean, thank you so much, Nadia. Thank you to everybody for for joining us for tonight. Um, I am very grateful to everyone who's come out and watched the presentation. I'm incredibly grateful to Nadia and Russell for tonight. Um, I can't wait to see your favorite photo, which is yet to come, Nadia. <laughs> just just before um, we sign off, I, I do yeah. want to say on behalf of Canon Canada, I want to thank uh, Nadia for, for spending her evening with us. We appreciate it. We want to thank McBain Camera, Jeline and Greg and, and all the great folks up there in Edmonton as well. And we want to thank the audience as well for spending your evening with us. And, and you know, certainly, uh, um, you know, make sure you do check those emails and uh, um, check your spam folder as well, just in case. But uh, other than that, you know, we just really want to uh, extend our gratitude for spending your evening with us. And, and thanks. Thanks again. Awesome. Thanks, folks. Uh, we're going to end tonight's presentation. Salute. Have a lovely rest of your week. I guess it's Tuesday, so it's just kind of getting started. But <laughs> yeah, Nadia, Nadia, did you want to say anything before we take off? Yeah. Do you, do you want to sign off with anything, Nadia? Oh, I just wanted to say um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. It was a pleasure to share my story and um, to be a part of the conversation and to see you, <laughs> you both again. <laughs> and Looking forward to it, for sure. So. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Take care. Bye, Take care. Bye.